it. Um, she discovered her passion for horticulture at the age of eight in her first ornamental garden that she tended with her father at their home in St. Anne de Beaupre, Quebec. She had such an interest in horticulture that she studied um, plant sciences at the Institut de Technologie Agricole de la Pocatière. I think that's in Quebec. Upon graduating in 1980, Odette has worked at the Botanical Gardens in Montreal. Um, after that, she relocated to Toronto. Um, she became a master gardener in 2015. Um, she shared her love and knowledge of plants with the York Region Gardeners through Lake Simcoe South Master Gardeners Advice Clinics, doing workshops, including a range of organic gardening topics. She transferred then to Toronto Master Gardeners in 2016, where she joined the executive as continuing education coordinator. Um, all this, I think she's an engineer too. I just don't remember. She's quite amazing. Fortunately for us, she has now relocated to the Ottawa region to be closer to her daughter and her new grandbaby. So we're very privileged to have Odette to be joining us now at the MCH. And for those of you who don't know Odette, for those of you who do know Oda, you will agree with me that she is a bundle of positive energy. Um, accordingly, she's jumped in with both feet, joining the MHA, uh, MCH, I'm sorry, MHS board, and assuming the role of community gardener chair. Is that your title, Oda? Did I say that? Beautification. You can believe it. Beautification this. chair. And yes. she works with the leads of the various gardens. <laughs> So without further ado, I introduce you to Odette on the topic of cold frame gardening. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to cold frame and cold crop presentation broadcasting live from my cold frame. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, yes, I'm right here in Manatic and it snowed this morning. It's okay. It didn't bother my cold frame. It didn't bother my cold crops. Everybody's doing well. So uh, this quick visit is, uh, is actually kind of a follow-up to Sharon Smith's uh, excellent presentation from a couple of weeks ago, uh, which was about seeding indoors, seeding, I guess, uh, mostly heat-loving crops like tomatoes and, and peppers, but I think she had other stuff too. Um, so it's a good idea to start things indoors if, if you wish, but there's an option. You can start things outdoors. So this presentation is about the outdoors and it's about um, taking advantage of like and lengthening the season our growing season making it longer start as early as possible as early as you can put your your tools in the ground and keeping it until december if you can so we'll be going over cold crops uh, what they are and we'll look into basic structures such as cold frames to uh, understand what you can do okay. I'm going to give you a quick tour of a um, cold frame. So first of all, it's four feet by eight feet. It's not big. <laughs> and it's a, so this is what uh, it looks like, right? It's um, at the bottom, it's got uh, a wood frame. I don't know if you see it. Yeah, you can see the wood frame. It has got plastic conduits, like one inch plastic conduits that are inserted as loops. And uh, there's plastic draped over and um, Plastic yeah. drip over, and on the outside, I guess all the plastic has been tucked in so that the wind doesn't get in, and um, it's kind of warm in here. So, and uh, so there's no. Uh, I'm going to show you what else. Yeah, so this uses passive heat as um, there's no heating. There's uh, nothing like that. It's just like the light, the UV rays get through the plastic, and um, they decompose into infrared. Uh, rays, which is heat, and it decomposes into light as well. So, so it's, it gets quite a bit warm in here. You actually have to watch uh, because it gets a little bit too hot sometimes. So you really have to watch for this. So what I've got going here, I've got, uh, okay, I've got some radishes, spinach, uh, 
what is this? Uh, pak choy, uh, Asian greens, uh, and I've got, so yeah, lots of spinach and uh, radishes, lots of that. And I've got some mescaline mix. I also have other plants that I'm hardening off. Okay, so celery that I seeded indoors that I'm hardening off outside now. Same with the parsley and the onions that I started indoors and hardening off. Uh, asparagus that, uh, we are, that are perennials and that will stay outside. And just I seeded them inside. Uh, a whole bunch of herbs. Uh, what else? I've got some uh, ornamentals as well. So I've got a few things going there. I'm going to share my screen now and show you. Okay, hopefully it goes. Hey, so do you see? Yeah, you see it, right, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, so this is my cold frame that I'm sitting in. This is uh, back on March 8th. So we had quite a bit of snow left. Um, there's uh, lots of snow around the structure, but the ground uh, inside of it had already thawed out. So I started uh, some putting some seed down. Why not, right? I mean, what does co uh, seed cost? Not so much. So I put some uh, radishes uh, seed at that point, and yes, they are growing. So they're very tough. Those uh, radish is really tough. So the objective of a cold frame is really to extend the season by at least uh, three weeks. You gain about three weeks. It's usually a couple of degrees, two to three degrees warmer inside here than it is outside. So you can extend the season considerably. Okay. Uh, you can see that uh, cold frame there is uh, built from recycled material. I asked my husband to minimize the cost so that it's not a hindrance for anyone to build a cold frame. So that cost uh, total, it cost $50 in uh, plastic and uh, hardware. So that's uh, not too much money, right? And the con yeah, the little uh, plastic conduits are inside of it, like they, I would say the structure. Yeah, so total $50, very inexpensive. Oh, okay, it's hanging on now, you guys. Hey, I didn't slide my slideshow. Play from start. All right, okay. So I've got some cold flame, uh, cold, cold frame plants here. Very simple, right? So to the left, this is something I got from the internet and it's a glass structure. And um, of course it's beautiful, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but it shows you the, the basic principle. Uh, you can make actually cold frames out of old windows. Many people do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, recycled windows and it works just as well. Uh, it's just um, perfect. Uh, the photo in the middle and the one to the right are, this is my old cold frame uh, when I used to live in Toronto. And uh, it, it wasn't one of those you, you could just sit in and, and, and chat with friends, right? <laughs> 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 So, uh, you know, so uh, it's a two by two by uh, eight structure with plastic again. And um, I'm just going to bring my mouse over. So right here, this is a lid that's attached with hinges that you can lift to water and seed. Mm. And inside, this is what this looks like. So, mm. so this cold frame here, that was in 2019. Um, I had seeded my lettuce and rapini. I had seeded them on March 21st, and the photo here was taken on, on April 21st, and the harvest was ready for May 21st. So just to, it, you can't, it's like you gain a mini season in doing that. It's, uh, it's, not, um, it's not that complex, but anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's my presentation about cold frames. Very short. <laughs> okay, cold crops, what are they? Well, lots of cold crops, of course, there's so much. Oh my goodness. Um, so we have, uh, the, the idea of cold crops is to, again, it's to extend the growing season, right? Um, so there's like two parts in the season that you want to extend. There's the early spring and there's the late fall. So th that's what you're trying to integrate <laughs> in your growing season, yeah. right? So for the uh, early season, uh, there's uh, kale, lettuce, spinach, rapini, uh, Asian greens, uh, 
Asian greens, uh, they're amazing and they're, they're delicious, uh, you know, on the stove steamed with <coughs> oil and uh, hot peppers or whatever. Anyway, Asian greens, simple to grow. Okay, uh, several uh, others, peas, uh, radish, chard, collard greens, endive. Uh, th there is so much stuff you can try growing. And, I, you know, this spring I was looking at uh, the book, um, like the online... Um, catalogs right uh, for the seed then there's just like varieties galore there's so much that's available so nothing should stop you <laughs> imagination is not needed it's all there um so the all this all that stuff should be in the ground already if you haven't started your garden and you have garden like you have land uh, do it. Like just start your lettuce and uh, your Asian greens, your radishes, kale, all that stuff, even your peas should be in the ground now. Um, same as potatoes and the onions. I've already pl planted my, mine. They're, they're in there. I planted them last weekend. And even though we had the frost today or near frost, that stuff can take it. You know, it's okay. Uh, fall is the fall season is the other end of the spectrum that I like to utilize, right? Is um, So I try to keep my vegetables that I plant, like let's say midsummer, I plant in July. I usually see like a whole bunch of carrots in mid-July and uh, beets and uh, those those things. I plant, I seed them midsummer and I keep them until December. So it's like, again, extending the season uh, as much as possible. And I'll tell you why, actually, I like to see my carrots. It's because uh, I like to see them in July because it's past the window when the uh, the uh, rust flies and the uh, the maggots, the root maggots, like all those, it's finished at that point. They're not coming mm -hmm. to haunt your, your carrots anymore, right? So, so just to avoid mm -hmm. them, I try to go and see them in July. All right. Mm -hmm. Why are, like I just wondered, you know, why, why are uh, cold crops tolerant? Why are they tolerant? It's a, it's a bit of science for this morning, I guess. So, um, so I looked on the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture site. And um, so they, they said that savoid leaves, so you see those, uh, those kale uh, leaves right here with their sort of ruffled up, uh, uh, I guess, surface. So that's where the air gets trapped and it's got an insulating effect, right? So, so there you go, you have, uh, so savoid leaves. So when you pick your, your varieties uh, on in the catalogs, look for savoid leaves, like, you know, like, um, like, you know, parsley, not parsley, not parsley, you could do it too, why not? But lettuce leaves, like don't pick an oak, oak leaf lettuce, pick like a savoid leaf lettuce. The second thing, the anthocyanin there. Okay, so what is that? Okay, it's the purple pigment and that occurs naturally. So if you, anything you see that's got a purple pigment, like of course kale, but beans too, all these, the purple pigment is like an antifreeze. You can put that, um, you, you can, it, it occurs naturally. So if you're picking, again, varieties uh, online, look for savoid leaves and the purple pigment. Um, genetic. Well, you know about genetic modifying, right? So I don't approve of it. Uh, there's a lot of research that's big money, and but that's one one of the reasons why, why some plants are so much tolerant. And um, the last thing that I found on the um, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture site is watering. If you water a lot, you're going to keep your plants uh, more frost resistant. So that's the physiogenic factor that I'm seeing here. It's water, mm -hmm. just water. Like yes, mm -hmm. yesterday I came and I watered everybody here and uh, in my cold frame and also outside I've watered everything. Make sure that uh, they're nice and uh, pre prepared for the, the cold uh, temperature today. Okay, another one, why? plant uh, cold uh, cold crops well they're delicious and it's not a mystery for anyone delicious uh, I mean everybody likes carrots everybody likes a fresh lettuce um, so that's that's uh, that's what it's about right it's about making beautiful food uh, different than what you find in grocery stores um, extending the growing season 
is the second reason you would choose to plant early uh, uh, frost resistant uh, crops is that to extend the growing season. So very early and uh, yeah. So what um, the idea is to increase our fresh food self-reliance, I guess you could say. Um, I think people became aware of that a lot more recently uh, with the COVID. I think, uh, I think we've all experienced shortage of this and shortage of that. And uh, we were all frustrated with that. So we all that told ourselves that we need to be able to produce our stuff better and ourselves, like the vaccines, for example. Why aren't we producing vaccines in this country? I don't know, but anyway, uh, in the garden, I think, uh, I think many people understood that they need to start gardening and producing their own stuff. So that's probably why it's so hard to get um, some of the um, ingredients for early gardening. And uh, the uh, last uh, reason why you should be using cold crops is they don't require poll pollination, right? The, um, the, uh, that's why they don't require bees. Like uh, bees are becoming scarcer uh, insects of all kinds are becoming scarcer. Maybe not here in Manatech. I got to tell you, there's I've seen some interesting uh, insects like bumblebees galore, but some none of that is in Toronto anymore. And uh, probably in the city here in Ottawa, there's probably not that many either. So mm -hmm. yeah, we've eliminated um, our insect population, and um, so the cold crops don't require pollination. So that's why you get. Uh, that's why you get a pretty reliable um, harvest with that. All right. So I was going to, oh yeah, I wanted to point out this little, uh, this is, uh, so this is not my, uh, my cold, uh, cold friend, this is my neighbors. And all she put is the hoops and she put a, um, she had kale going in there. And um, anyway, so it's just, uh, it's very simple, but even basic, not even tucked in at the side. Like, you know, you can just put your sheet of plastic on top, just like that. Doesn't have to be complex at all, right? So, so just wanted to show you that, that photo. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to do this morning is to do a little demo about seeding outside. And I was going to seed some rapini. Does anybody know rapini here? I don't know. It looks like a, a little broccoli, but uh, it's, uh, ooh, it's very tolerant. I don't think you're going to be able to see. Oh, Odette, do you want to stop your screen sharing? Because then we can see you bigger. Oh, yes, good point. Yeah. Oh, stop share. Come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> it's better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we'll try to get closer to my little area. Okay, and right here. Hey, that's not bad. So right here, this little spot. Oh yeah, you can see. We're just gonna prepare the soil first. And uh, like remove most of the debris because there's winter debris. And we're going to make a, a little uh, crease in the middle here. And um, we're going, so I don't actually have seed in my hands, if you can believe this. I left my seeds indoors. So, hey, <laughs> hey you would, uh, I'm thinking right now. <laughs> so you can put some seeds here. And that's it. And then throw your seed back on top, uh, your soil back on top, woo, 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 like this. And tap on top. There you go. And voila, that's it. Rapini seeded, right? Voila. All right. So I hope I demystified some of the uh, gardening with cold frames. It's not difficult. You can all do it. Okay, so thank you everyone. Happy gardening. <laughs>